Hello there, my fellow mech warriors, and welcome back to another dose of the Battle Mechs of Battletech. For today, we are gonna be covering another quite famous clan mech, which I am not ashamed to say is one of my favorite battle mechs as well. In fact, it might be the very first battle mech I learned the name of, because it was in the MechWarrior 4 Vengeance opening cinematic, which is also the first MechWarrior game I ever played. Back to the video though, this battle mech is the Vulture. Originally named the Mad Dog, but because I think Vulture sounds cooler, I'm gonna keep that in the title. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A couple of stats on this thing include It is a heavy design at 60 tons, a top speed of 86.4 km an hour, and a rounded price of 15.3 million C bills. The Mad Dog is a heavy clan Omnimech used for long range indirect fire support. With its hunched shoulders, a protruding head, and reverse jointed legs, the Mad Dog does indeed resemble a Vulture, so much so that it was codenamed the Vulture or Hagetaka, which does mean Vulture in Japanese. The name was also fit for the battlefield role of the Mad Dog, as it was made to act as a support mech and it often holds a hill maintaining constant watch over the entire battlefield, akin to a Vulture waiting for prey. With its considerable firepower and decent speed of 86 km an hour, it does make for a highly mobile firing platform, and as such has spread to near ubiquity among the forces of the clans, although the design is favored the most by Clan Ghost Bear. The Mad Dog carries 8.5 tons of ferrofibrous armor for decent protection, although it will not stand up to a lot of heavy fire. It was designed originally by Clan Smoke Jaguar as a second generation Omnimech based on the original heavy Omnimech Lupus of Clan Coyote. The Mad Dog also used some of the same molds of the Clan Wolf Timberwolf Mech. However, despite using some of the same molds, which to some might be seen as high praise, the Mad Dog was instead named as a slur to the Lupus and the Timberwolf, and to the Clan's Wolf and Coyote respectively. But because of its widespread production, many clans maintain a large number of Mad Dogs in their own units. Without a doubt, its most distinctive features are its side torso and its arm pods, which are practically full modules in and of themselves, suggesting that the Vulture was conceived as a long-range support unit. The torso modules, angled high, are ideal for missiles, while the arms can serve as extended turrets suited for direct fire weaponry. For its fire support purposes, the Mad Dog is armed with twin shoulder mounted LRM-20 missile racks, which allow the mech to inflict a lot of damage on any opponent it chooses to target. It is also more than capable of going on the offensive, mounting dual, large and medium sized pulse lasers, one of each on each arm. Pilots of this thing have been known for showering missiles on the opponent before swooping down with a finishing blow from the lasers. Again, much like a vulture swooping down for carrion. In the case that the Mad Dog has to retreat or face heavier opponents, it can adequately do that as well, as the pulse lasers it mounts are much more accurate than standard lasers, allowing it to move and fire at the same time. This allows it to stall opponents and slowly back into a more defensible position, although overheating can become a problem. While the Vulture is widely produced by pretty much all the clans, it is particularly favored by the Ghost Bears and the Hell's Horses. Indeed, ever since their move to the Inner Sphere, the Ghost Bears Bergen Industry Factory line is building more and more clan designs, including their very own homegrown Vulture. A few notable warriors and commanders associated with the Vulture include Star Commander Lita. Although she was past her prime in 3063, Star Commander Lita was assigned to work alongside the promising rising star called Star Captain Jake Kabrinsky. 
Because of the skills and contacts she earned during her early invasion experiences as a POW in a Russell Hagen camp, Lita was able to uncover the activities of a Hell's Horses watch operation on the world of Predlitz, and destroyed a supply dump which further weakened the eventual invasion of the planet. She also reportedly assisted Jake Kabrinsky in critically wounded the horse's then con Malavai Fletcher, and she would go on to serve beside Kabrinsky in many other engagements after the final routing of the horses. Unfortunately, in 3068 she would meet her end in the cockpit of her vulture, once again battling elements of a Hell's Horses watch when they raided Russell Haig to capture Jake Kabrinsky. The Smoke Jaguar Galaxy Commander Russo Howell was also a Mad Dog pilot throughout most of his career. Finally, Beckett Malthus was the Sakan of the Clan Jade Falcon, also known as the Crow due to his ability to manipulate and strategize both in politics and warfare. Although he showed a lot of promise when he was a mech warrior in his early years, he lacked the will to do anything more than maintain the rank. That did not hinder his ability, however, to pinpoint the weaknesses of his enemies in order to achieve what he wanted. His successes were able to achieve him the rank of Galaxy Commander of the Khan's Bodyguard Unit, known as the Turkina Keshek. In order to control the future of the Clan Jade Falcon, Beckett watched for a perfect candidate in order to monitor them to the rank of Khan. He did find the perfect candidate in Janna Pride. Being a guiding hand, Beckett was eventually able to boost Pride's rank to Sakan, which eventually was orchestrated to the rank of Khan in 3129 after a failed offensive against Clan Wolf. When the Jade Falcon's deep strike was launched into the crumbling Republic, Beckett found himself attached to it after he fell out of favor. He slowly gravitated towards Melvina Hazen, whom he thought he could control and groom into a future leader. But that idea was destroyed when he first saw the destructive ways that she followed. When Malvina failed in her campaign to take Hesperus, Beckett believed it was the perfect opportunity to remove her from power. Unfortunately for him, that led to his own death. Beckett was known to pilot a black and silver vulture called Turkina's Crow, during the invasion of the Republic of the Sphere and other operations too. Now, for the second part of the video, let us go into a bit more detail on the configurations of this mech. Do keep in mind that not all the pictures are accurate portrayals of the variants described. Configuration A This one can bring devastating firepower on targets at any range, mounting an ERPPC and an LB-5X autocannon, which can easily cripple enemies at long range. Should the enemy get closer, it has 6 SRM-6 racks, which are more than enough to ensure the demise of pretty much any enemy. Configuration B This one is a more general purpose mech, mounting more laser weaponry, with 2 ER large lasers in the left arm, and 3 medium pulse lasers in the left one. For extra long range firepower, it has 1 LRM-20, having replaced the other with two Streak SRM-6 launchers. Configuration C This one is probably the most different from all the others, having replaced all the weapons with two gigantic Gauss rifles for an extremely powerful long-range punch. Configuration D This one has two ATM-12s which are powerful at any range. It also has paired ER medium lasers, medium pulse lasers, and ER small lasers. One extra heatsink keeps the heat levels under control. Configuration E This one makes use of a Hyper Assault Gauss Rifle 30 in each arm, known more commonly as the HAG-30. Although unfortunately it only has 2 tons of ammo between them. Configuration F this one has two HAG 20s, which are smaller than the previously mentioned HAG 30. Although they don't have the sheer firepower of the bigger cousins, it has four tons of ammo, which, when compared to the E variant, provides double the staying power. 
To back up the HAG-20s, it also mounts four ER medium lasers. Configuration G This one has two Streak SRM-6s in the right torso and a Streak SRM-15 in the left torso. It also has one ERPPC in the left arm, with the right one mounting three ER medium pulse lasers. Configuration H this was built in mind with the newer heavy laser technology. Downgrading the LRM-20 launchers to LRM-15s, so it can mount its arsenal of heavy large laser and free heavy medium lasers, making it much more powerful at closer range. Configuration U Bizarrely, this is an underwater configuration, using the Battletech Hargel system to prevent hull breaches. It is equipped with five UMUs to maintain a high cruising speed underwater, and its weapons consist of twin LRT-15s with Artemis IV guidance systems. LRT stands for Long Range Torpedo. Each arm also has a medium pulse laser and an ER medium laser. Finally, the so-called Vulture Mark II was the one produced by Bergen Industries for Clan Ghost Bear introduced by the time of the FEDCOM Civil War. It is almost functionally identical to the original, but it does have a slightly different appearance in terms of armor, structure, engine mounting, and other cosmetic areas, due to it being produced from the factories using spheroid tooling. One such change was moving the medium pulse lasers to a torso-mounted chin turret. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Vulture, aka the Mad Dog Heavy Mech for today. I am also perfectly aware that there are more Vulture models out there, particularly the Vulture Mark III and the Vulture Mark IV. I would have included them in this video as well, but as you may or may not know, my voice can't really handle two long episodes. So those marks are gonna be the topic of another day. But what are your thoughts on the Vulture? Is it among your favorite mechs? What do you like or dislike most about it? Do share your thoughts in the comments below if you want. If you enjoyed the video, please consider clicking the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and I wish you all an awesome healthy day. This is GDN signing out.